How's it going guys? Going to our next episode, we're going to learn about some new variables we got inside JavaScript. Now in 2015, we got a new version of JavaScript called ES6, which also brought along some new variables that we could use inside our JavaScript code. Now these variables have different functionalities when it comes to what they do as variables. And in this lesson, I'm going to explain some of the differences. So as you can see, I have three variables inside my uh, main.js document here called va, let, and const. Now the reason that we got these new variables is because there's a couple of issues when it comes to the var that we're used to using inside JavaScript. And the issue is that we have something called hoisting when we create functions or scripts using JavaScript that makes it possible for us to get errors when we create the scripts. And this is why we now have let and const because they go in and fix some of the issues that var has in it. Now you might be asking, why do we still have var? You know, why not just change it and make it into the same functionality that let has or const has? Well, because it has a slight difference in the way that it is used, we can't just go in and change var to, to have the same functionality as let does today because it might cause issues with already existing websites that uses var and that right now works. So if the people behind JavaScript suddenly were to just change it, then we might get a lot of issues with a lot of websites. So when we got new variables, we had to call it something else in order to not get these errors with existing websites out there. So let me go ahead and explain what exactly hoisting is because we need to understand what exactly the problem is before we can know why these are better than using var. So let me go ahead and delete what we have here and instead create a function that I'm going to call example parentheses curly brackets. And then inside this function here, I'm just going to create something like a for loop. And I'm just going to go ahead and change some of the values we have inside of here. So we say i is less than 10. Uh, we're going to add one each time we loop through this for loop. And then we get some kind of output inside the loop here. Now I'm, just, I'm not going to output anything because we just need this as an example. Um, and what I'm also going to go ahead and do here, so I'm going to go ahead and create a if statement. So I'm just going to say we have an if statement that says if x is lesser than 20, then run whatever's inside here. And we can actually go ahead and assign another value. We can say we have a va, which is called y, that is equal to 30 or something. Now I'm just going to go ahead and declare an x because we haven't declared it yet by using the va keyword. So on top of the if statement, I'm going to say we have a declared x variable, which is equal to 10. Now, if I were to go ahead and console log some of the information that we have inside this function here, you guys will notice that if we were to console.log some kind of information at the top here, if I were to take variable i and console log it here, and then also do it down at the bottom here, we should get two pieces of information inside the console, inside our browser. Now, what I would expect there to be would be to have some kind of uncaught reference error because right now we haven't actually declared i until we get down to the bottom here. So we should get an error in the first one. And then the second one down here is going to have a value because after uh, this for loop, we will have an i declared that has some kind of value inside of it. Or if we were to go ahead and take a much simpler example here, let's go ahead and take x which also is being declared down here in the middle of the function. So the top one should not have any reference to any declared variables called x. Now, if we were to go down to the bottom here and actually run my example function, go to my browser, refresh, you will notice that we get two values. We don't get an error, which we did actually expect. We get an undefined, which is the first console log, and then we get 10, which is correct because the second one does actually have a variable called uh, x that is equal to 10. So why do we get undefined? Now, undefined means that we already have the variable declared, but we haven't given it a value yet. Meaning that what this function essentially tells us is that we have a variable up here at the top called x, like so. But we don't have that, so why do we get undefined? Well, that's because we have something called hoisting. Now, what happens inside any kind of a function leveled element, such as a function here, is that if we were to have any kind of variables such as uh, i, x, and y, then it's going to automatically declare the variables at the top of this function level, 
Meaning that what I wrote here, let's actually go ahead and just delete the console logs. What I wrote here is the exact same thing as writing the following. I'm going to write var i dot x dot y. So now we declared i, x and y at the top here. And I can actually go ahead and delete what we have down here with the declaration. So I'm going to delete the, the var keyword like so. This is the exact same thing as the previous function we had where we didn't have var declared at the top here manually. And this is an issue because if we were to later on in this function here, use i again, then we're going to be messing with the same i variable as we used inside this loop here. Now what I would like to do is I would like to keep this i variable a value inside this loop. And if I were to accidentally later on create a second i variable, then I would like it to be a new variable that isn't the same as this one up here. So if I were to actually go ahead and create another for loop down here, that also has i inside of it, then it's the exact same thing as writing this, which is going to be a problem because now we have you know, more than just one variable i, and it suddenly becomes this huge mess that we want to avoid. So what we can do instead is if we were to just go back here to the original function we had without all the console logs and the declarations and such, then what I can do instead is I can go ahead and use va and change it out with let. Now by doing this, then we don't have what we call a function level variable, which means that, you know, it gets declared at the top and then we can use it inside the entire function. Instead, I can only be used inside this for loop and X will can be used anytime underneath this uh, declaration up here. So I could actually reference to X down here because we declared it not inside a if statement. Again, we call it a block level variable. So if we were to go inside the if statement where we declared Y, then I cannot reference to Y down here because it's inside this block here, which is the if statement. Okay, so we can actually avoid getting all sorts of errors, which is a huge improvement when it comes to JavaScript. Now, let me actually go ahead and run this code here and say, I want to do the same thing as we did before with the console log. So I'm going to say console dot log at the top here. And I'm going to go ahead and log out x just like we did before. And then I'm going to just copy it paste it at the bottom here. And I'm going to console log x one more time. Now, what should be the effect here? Because in the first example, we did expect it to say something like uncaught reference error because we don't have any x to reference to up here in the first one, but instead we got undefined. So what we should actually get now is what we expect to get. Oops, we do actually need to write it out down here. There we go. So now if we run the function, you will see we get a uncaught reference error because X is not defined. And this is what we want to get because we get more control over the code that we have inside our uh, website, which is much better than using var. Now you might be asking me, well, why should we even use var when we have let now that will essentially replace the usage of var. Now, right now at the moment, as I'm making this video, it's not 100% of all browsers that support the new ES6 JavaScript version. So you need to be aware of the fact that some browsers can't use let yet. But again, if you were to go inside and check which browsers does actually support it, then it is pretty much all of them today. I mean, there's not a lot of browsers that don't support it. So I would, in my projects, just start using let instead of using var because it makes sense. Now, we also have a second new variable, which is called const. Now, the difference between let and const is that const takes up less resources inside the browser. If we were to go ahead and define that we have something called const, let's go ahead and delete what we have here. I'm going to create a const variable or just a const because we don't call it a variable anymore called x, which is equal to 10. Now, this is going to take up a lot less resources than if we were to use let instead, but we can't change the variable later on. If we were to go ahead and say that x is now equal to something else, let's say 20, then we're going to get an error inside the browser. If we were to actually go ahead and run this, you can see that we get a uncaught type error because we can't assign a new value to a constant variable, which is what we're trying to do here. So we should only be using const if we have variables that we know are not going to change later on. And to be honest, I think it's much easier just to stick with let 
Again, there's some people who would argue against what I just said, but personally, when I create projects using JavaScript, I just sort of stick with let because I don't want to get any kind of errors when I try to change the values inside my uh, variables here. Now, another thing I also want to mention, if you were to create a constant object, which we talked about previously, I can actually go ahead if we were to create an object here and say we have a value such as x, which is equal to something like 10. And I also have a y that is equal to something like 20. Then I can't change this object and make it into a new object. So if we were to go ahead and say we want to change x down here into a second object that might have 20 and 20, then again, I'm going to get a error. But what I can do is I can actually change the individual values inside the object because the object here is a constant variable, but the values inside the object is not. So what I can actually do is I can say that x dot x, which means that we're referencing to the x inside uh, the object here, is going to be equal to something else like 20. If I go back inside the browser, you will notice that we do not get an error message. If we were to actually console log dot log, the uh, the object here, like so, you'll actually notice that we still get uh, the object, but the values have changed and we can do this because the individual values are not going to be a constant, okay? So I'm just throwing that out there so you don't think you can't change anything about uh, these constant variables. If you were to use it like an object or maybe insert a function into a variable, we can actually do that by creating, you know, like a function like so, we could actually do things in here. And again, it's going to be the same thing like the object. So this is the differences between using var, let, and constant. And in the future, in these episodes, we will be using let instead of var. And I will probably get questions from people later on when they start noticing that we're not using variables, but instead let, if they jumped in later on in this course here. Uh, but it's something that I think it's a really good habit to get into. And we need to make sure we get uh, new methods and functions and variables, for example, uh, out there, and we need to start using them to make it a habit for other programmers to see it inside something like tutorials when it comes to JavaScript. So in the future, we'll be using let instead of variables. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to say thank you for all the support you've given me on YouTube and give out a huge thanks to the people on Patreon who supported me on Patreon on a monthly basis. And if you're new and you don't know about Patreon, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description of this video and it'll take you to my Patreon where you can pay a small amount every month either to support me or to download the lesson material for my uh, lessons here on uh, the channel. So I hope you guys will take the time to go and check that out. And I hope to see you guys next time.